It'll be interesting to see how Blake Simmons can lead the way and what kind of supporting cast will he get today from his teammates. So ready to jump things here at the Ford Center and the possession will be controlled by the Purple Aces as Dwayne Gibson will run the offense for the Purple Aces, another senior for Evansville. Yeah, Boo gets it. He's going to have to facilitate. He's going to have to facilitate the offense today. He's going to have to figure out who he wants to go to in this Marty Simmons style off the ball screen type offense. Blake Simmons with the basketball right now. Tries to force a pass to Gibson who runs into traffic, maintains the dribble, now picks it up. You can already see the defensive pressure from the Governors. They play so dynamic defense. Two to shoot, Gibson goes up with it and it rims off. And the rebound down to the Governors as they'll get their first possession. We saw the three trio, but Dayton Gum, a freshman, has really stood out this year for the Governors. Absolutely unbelievable when he's been able to do two 20-point games already this year. That's since the start of the, the century. The last time a freshman was able to get two 20-point games in the first six games of the season. First shot up for the Governors. And it'll go out of bounds on the baseline to the Purple Aces. And one thing that you pointed out, looking at the starting lineup, a lot of newcomers to this Austin P squad. But three starters from nearby Bowling Green, at least in proximity to Clarksville, Tennessee. It's amazing. Three starters from the same city. And so whether they played together in high school, played against each other in high school, they're used to playing the same style of offense, same style of defense. And of course, under Matt Figger, it's going to be a high-pressure defensive game on both sides, especially Marty Simmons. The way the Purple Aces control the shot clock, it's not going to be a high-scoring affair. Gibson to the basket, gets the basket and the foul. Gibson. Gibson will head to the line for one more. A nice little play coming off that back cut and then going back to the basket. Just a good move. He saw he had his defender beat. And, of course, the defender underneath didn't have his feet set. Good call by the referees. Chance of a three-point play. Gibson completes the three-point play. So we'll take a look at our keys to the game here, Alex, and should be pretty interesting. Again, just the matchup overall, but your two keys to the game for each side. If you're Austin P, push the tempo. The Purple Aces are down. Three guys, Solomon Heine also out for the Purple Aces, and so they have a short bench. Take it to the Purple Aces defensively, and don't let Blake Simmons beat you on the offensive side of things for the Purple Aces. The Purple Aces, we already talked about it. Find a new kind of offense. Who is going to step up besides Blake Simmons? We already saw Boo Gibson. There's a three-pointer for Austin P. And, of course, the Purple Aces, 27 in a row at home. Non-conference win streak. Defend the Ford Center. Trey Ivory with the three-point shot. Gets the first points of the day for Austin P. And they have tied this one up early at three apiece. Austin P does such a nice job pressing and face guarding. They're right on you when you get the ball. Another foul. This time will be on the offensive end against Noah Frederick, the freshman for the Purple Aces. Noah Frederick, it's his first personal. The team's first. Frederick King a little erratic there going to the basket. Didn't necessarily know what he wanted to do with the ball, and that's maybe a little bit of a freshman mistake, but he's been a really key component to the Purple Aces team this year. Now, as you mentioned, Evansville playing with nine guys total today. And right to the basket for Austin P. Steve Harris, the junior out of St. Louis, Missouri, gets to the basket, finishes with the right hand. So we highlighted the other three, and of course, Harris and Ivory score. Just as how, how you draw it up. <laughs> Frederick King leaves that one short. And here comes the upbeat tempo, but now slowing it down. Chris Porter punt button. Nice reverse finish from Avery Ugba. Austin P leading by four. Gibson in trouble. Yes. And then the turnover by Evansville picked up by Harris. Into the paint. Acrobatic shot doesn't go. And Kuhlman's right there to pick it up. Simmons can't get that one to bank off the window. After some early points from both sides, Austin P's defense able to hold firm here in the last couple minutes. The Governors, on average, allow teams turn their turnovers 24 a game 24 a game that's absolutely unbelievable on average just see what Matt figure his style what he's been able to intensify into his club is to play hard-nosed defense Gibson almost lost it on an unforced over there 
underneath. Hakavichis for Evansville. The junior transfer can't get that one to roll in. Your hot cabbage just got to make that. That is a good look. He had so much space, able to back down his defender. You got to finish if you're that close to the rim. Zyvery wants to slow things down just a bit to set up the half court offense for the Governors. And that one's a little too high for Ivory on the back end, and that'll take us to a timeout. Austin P with the early lead, 93 over Evansville, and this is the Valley on ESPN3. Good! Amazing. It is amazing. He's got 27 points. Career high is 29, and he's just a freshman. He has dominated this game. The he Governors win. Extra underneath that one to get up in the air over the, the defensive hand. He saw what Hot Cavett just, just did to Ivory. He didn't want that to have happened to him. On now the other on the defensive block on Gibson. Amazing. It is amazing. Governors with the lead, 61-60. 120 left. Governors looking to extend this lead. This has been mainly in the control of Evansville for most of this game. There's Porter Button going to get Simmons and a traveling violation. Seen a couple of those here today for both sides. Kind of kill possessions for each team as well. They tried to ISO Button against Simmons and Simmons just played good defense. Read his legs, read his feet. Saw where he was going with the ball and a big turnover for the Governors. This is going to be a good one. One minute to go. Hall into Riley. One minute. So he finally gets across with about two seconds to spare. Underneath, Riley on the feed from Simmons up. Can it get it to fall, but he will head to the line where we've seen him knock down a couple free throws already in this game. I'm on the edge of my seat, Press. I'm telling you, every possession, every little pass right now, this is exciting basketball. As Riley goes from controlling the basketball near half court to being the one getting to the basket. These are the two biggest free throws of the season for K.J. Riley. And he's tied the game up at 61 with one to go. What was unbelievable about that play is Riley just had the ball two seconds beforehand up top. He's curled around all the way, got the in-feed pass from Blake Simmons. And the Aces with two free throws by Riley. On top by one, 62-61. The fans are on their feet here at the Ford Center in downtown Evansville. Governors can try for a two for one if they want it. If not, got to get a smart possession. Smart possession. They will not go for the two for one. Ivory looking inside, guarded by Gibson, has to get it out to Gum. Under 10 to shoot. Goes around the screen, Gum looking to cross up Riley to the basket, blocked. It'll be out of bounds to the Governors with two seconds on the shot clock. And a timeout will be called by Austin P. Timeout, Governors. Unbelievable game that's, I mean, it's been like this all game long and it's not going to end until that final buzzer sounds. We'll take a look at the whole last possession here. This is, Governor's really just started to go a little bit too late. Gum up top, tries to go with five seconds left. Had a chance of two for one, didn't want it. Hot Cavaches has come up with two big blocks on the last couple possessions, but here we go. There's still two seconds on the shot clock. The Governors can decide whether they want to curl up top and get a three-point try and opportunity. It's got to be a, a catch-and-shoot opportunity. Not much time to dribble or if they want to go lob inside. And again, look for Ugbert Taylor if they want to go inside, if they're going outside. They're setting up Gum for three. And for Evansville, they have to be careful on the defensive end on the imbalance play not to commit a foul. Of course, and of course they're you know in the bonus. And so you know it's going to be a, a catch-and-shoot opportunity no matter where the imbalance pass comes from. So again, you have the chance to set up Taylor inside if that's what you want to go to. Again, that's what you think, but Evansville's going to be so ready for that inbound pass to come inside. There's a stuff. Might even have been KJ Riley on the block. It was really close to see. Especially again, off the basketball, got to be careful here. Might see a few teams get a little creative to try to draw that whistle before the ball's even back into play. Gum's going to inbound it. You don't really have time to pass it in and then give it back to Gum. We'll see what happens. They did it. 
gets it off. Air ball down to Hall. Shot clock off. Ace is up one, and now the foul will be committed by Austin P. And that was the play all along. They uh, they did have, I guess, a second of time, but you know, I don't know if I like that call because it was so it was almost so predictable. And they didn't have enough time for Gum to get it. And he's shooting a deep three. It was good defense. And now, remember when I said KJ Riley was shooting the two biggest free throws of his career? Well, now he's shooting the two biggest free throws of his career if he can make the first. <laughs> They're always the biggest until the next one, right? Without a doubt. As Ivory has been fouled out of this game. Or Chris Porter Button, rather. Yeah, Button. Ivory does have four fouls, though. Zach Glotta into the game. And Riley to the line. Even with two makes, there's still a chance for the Governors. Rattles one home. And this is the big one. This is the big one. KJ Riley puts this in. Governors, they do still have time to go for a two-point basket, but we'll see what they want to set up. Riley connects. Very clutch. Three-point lead for Evansville. Ball into play. Across that court, timeout called by Austin P. So now it's the guessing game on both sides. That figure's either going to draw up an ISO really quickly to Taylor maybe get him a quick two-point basket then he gets a foul to back to the fouling game or if he wants to go for broke and wants to tie this game and send it to overtime he's got a chance to drop a three-point play this is where you throw all the cards out the window and you sit back relax and enjoy the show what a game it's been Evansville's up by three tremendous defense on the last couple of possessions KJ Riley with four of the biggest free throws of his career really making his his name to start for this team, especially with Smith out and Taylor out as well. Three scores in double figures for Evansville. A couple in double figures for Austin Peay, including Taylor with 27, two off his career high. You see there, KJ Riley stepping up big time in the absence of the two top lean scores for Evansville. Simmons and Gibson also in double figures. Stevens into the game for Austin P. He'll be the one to inbound. Looking to get it in. He'll get the feedback. They're going to go for three. They tie the game. Gets it to go. Avery Agba. Tied at 64. Avery Agba, the big man, stepping out and tying this one up at 64. Just over a second left. What a game pressed. I mean, the senior puts the team on his back with one second to go. The most unlikeliest of candidates to shoot the three. But guess what? You know what they teach you? When you're open, shoot the basketball. And he was open. Hot Cavett just didn't think there was a shot that Ugbo was going to take it. And he does. And he drains it. That's what a senior leader does. Had a tough game up until that point. But that's where heroes are made. 64-64. Second to go and if you're the Purple Aces what kind of crazy inbounds pass do you have here? Remember we saw two seconds left. Frederick King hit the back iron for three. I mean this game has absolutely been remarkable. For Ugba, 15 points last time out against Illinois. Only seven here now but he hit the biggest shot of the game for Austin to tie this one up at 64. Going into today's game one of four from three. And for Evansville again what you come up with. I mean for me I mean, almost either kind of have to settle for possibly overtime or go for at least a lengthier pass down the court. Yeah, I mean, here's the thing you got to be careful of. If you go with the lengthy pass down the court and no one touches it, it goes over everyone's head, the governors get to inbound right underneath their basket. So you got to be very careful. If you're the Purple Aces, I really do think you're going to want to play for overtime here and take your chances at home in the Ford Center with a 27-game win streak on the line. And remember, Frederick beat the buzzer at halftime. For Evansville, well, he's on the bench. Who's going to be the one to throw it up here for the Aces? Simmons to inbound, gets it into Hall. And it will not get off in time. So let's play some more basketball.